You're listening to Cards to the Moon, a podcast about trading cards from both a collector and investor perspective. We hope you'll stick around for the ride as we take a deep dive into the state of the hobby, share some hot takes, hopefully some useful advice and fun stories along the way. Hey all, welcome to Cards to the Moon. This is episode 64. I'm Clark from Five Card Guys and with me as always, is Hyung of Integrity Sports Cards and John, who is trade you at recess, all one word, on Instagram. Okay, so off the top for today's episode, I know we're a bit late to this, but I wanted to still just briefly touch upon the release of Top Series 2 Baseball. And uh, I think at first we all thought that this would be an awful set to collect because, um, you know, the rookies are are not in there and and there's not a lot in the checklist. But John, I think you're the one that sent a link to an article revealing that Top Series 2 actually has a few juicy short print cards available in this set, which frankly kind of saved the set from being almost completely worthless. So right. <laughs> John, do you want to share what we're talking about here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all Scotty B, man. Shout out to our homeboy Scotty. He released, he released the video of originally the rookie list for series two and it was all you know everybody was expecting j-rod bobby witt and the fact that their names were not on there it, it was just so disappointing right and made you think series two is gonna be complete trash there was literally subpar names at best uh and then you know not too long ago scotty b updated a new video revealing that they will you know j-rod Bobby Witt, Torkelson are in fact mm. in the set, but their flagships are going to be SP, a la Acuna Bat Down, which is right. exactly what everybody and the hobby wanted to hear. Completely saved it, and it made it, you know, for me, turned it sort of into a pretty hot product. So, um, huge news, huge news. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What do you think, Young? I, I'm not sold. I'm not completely sold <laughs> okay. um, for a couple of reasons. Uh, I don't think they're as SP as we think they are. That right? That was going to be the next so thing I was to talk just, about. And I just see these prices and what people are paying for them, and I, I get it's the release, but just to put into perspective, like um, Acuna's bat down, like PSA ten. There's there's a pop of less of around two hundred, I'd say. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Then the next year, 2019, Vladdy was in the same situation. They kind of did a SP, no numbered, where it was supposed to follow the bat down. But I believe, I don't know what the PSA 10 uh, pop count is, but I imagine it's over 2,000. Hmm. Um, so I'm I'm just, okay, so you notice the trend. And that was pre, pre-COVID. Yeah, right, so you, you you're talking about a huge increase in pre- print run just from the one year, um, and the Vladi bat down just to give you perspective is selling a PSA nine selling for forty five bucks. So mm. you go fast forward to twenty twenty two series two, how much more print run is those you know Bobby Witt and are they true SPs and are is it kind of like following the same as Vladdy if even if it's at like the Vladdy stage a PSA 9 slash raw card at 45 bucks versus the $300 you see that are selling at so just given perspective not being like a downer on it I'm happy that they're they're in it <laughs> because mm-hmm. I think they're going to be great cards in the future for for people because it's kind of like their first uh, rookie card as an MLB player right so um just to put things into context that's the only thing you know it's something to be weary about just based on pop counts and and prices right right mm-hmm. it's a great point that you make because uh as i have been observing people rip uh you do see those guys pop up very easily right for for a short printed card uh to see it come out fairly easily in blasters fairly you know Almost one per hobby. You're, it looks like people are hitting either either one of the three, um, which was you know in previous. If you're chasing Luis Robert, his base, you're getting one out of a hobby box, right? And right. that's we're talking like high printed base cards. So um, I don't mm. know what the actual numbers are, but it does certainly seem like you know, which has been sort of the pattern and the theme 
with all cards that have came out since last year of sort of this overprinting, it does seem like there's a, there's quite a bit. So if you have it, probably a good time to sell. But <laughs> still, you know, regardless, if, if you're just looking at it straight without looking at the numbers, just from a hobby perspective, it is still exciting. For me, it was when I heard the news. <laughs> I was gonna say you guys are you guys are downers. Let's rip uh, boys. I know. I, I that's why I'm I'm still ripping 2022 Bowman. <laughs> right. Chasing that's prospects. Little... But then does that does that mean there's no there's no parallels, right? Uh not for the SPs. For right. for the regular if they're regular rookies, then uh they would have their, you know, paper parallels that right. they would have, right? But which is good. I that's another thing I don't think they should do is do an SP, a short print, and then create parallels on the short print. On the short like print. I like I hate that. Right. Like I I think it just takes away from kind of like that. Right. That short print. Because right? Top Scrum Top Scrum does that. Top Scrum does that Top with Scrum, like yeah. like Bachette like Bachette SP, and then there's like a refractor, and then a yeah. gold, and then and a I don't green, like that at all. A, yeah. Yeah. I'm not a fan. Mm, it, right. I see. And then Courtside does it with Panini. Right, kind of like I mean, courtside. I I was I, I wish they just kept it at like a certain kind of, you know, you oh, don't you don't so, need all of the right. parallels, right? So the, like the courtside base is a short print in itself, right? Like, and they add a silver and then a tie dye and stuff like that. But then there's tie dye concourse. There's tie dye, you know, right. um, right in in other sets too, right? Or another right. uh, variation. So yeah. Okay, you guys saved me two hundred fifty bucks Canadian. I <laughs> don't. No, we gotta still about, rip. We gotta still rip about a box. A jumbo. <laughs> and Clark, that's what we have to do when when we're in the the office. Is uh, yeah. like every time sure. a new set comes out, we're ripping, and we're yeah. gonna rip on and camera we're... for content. Worst yeah. case, content. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> that's our motto when we do when we make content. <laughs> Best case, we make we make uh, card porn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We get featured on card porn. Yeah. You guys get featured yeah, as sure. scammers. I know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can't. I can't wait till your new space opens so we can actually do some ripping and filming for yeah. sure. More for content sure. creation, Clark. More content creation. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Before we go on to the um, before we go on to our next segment, yeah, I just want to point out also there's another round. Of the home field advantage inserts, I think we mentioned in a previous episode <laughs> right. in tops, in top series two, and um, you know I completed the first set, and I think I got to go for this one. Oh boy! But I just checked that Wander Fran- Franco insert is still worth a couple hundred bucks. It shouldn't be it because shouldn't there's be. so many out there, and we were just talking about how limited are these SP or case hits okay. really, and um, if you type, just type it on eBay. There's a lot listed right now on on that marketplace. So, right. so you know, the good thing for me, I guess, as a collector trying to complete this set, you know, the other inserts are, you know, averaging around 25 to 40 bucks, mm. 45 bucks. So it's doable. I just got to wait, wait it out for the Franco card to I, come down. I like the Wander card, though. I think, I think it looks it, nice. Yeah, yeah I think nice. it'll have legs uh, as, as product dries up, too. Like, it's, it is shorter printed than, you know, his base rookie that you get in series right. one right so it's right. like it i think it will be a, a demanded card uh in the future like it's it's just a nice uh shorter print and it's different you know so yeah. i think it'll have uh decent potential just not buying it now <laughs> right. with my luck it's gonna go to we gotta we gotta pull it <laughs> yeah we gotta pull it you know th- you know what that's that might be my rationale to get a box of uh <laughs> Top series too. <laughs> <laughs> they they you 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 also could actually pull um uh autos of Bobby Witt uh in, oh, in, in right? series two. Uh okay. autos of Julio Rodriguez. It's it's all the nineteen eighty seven kind of like that uh right, right, that right. insert auto. So I think that's a pretty cool card because there's no there's really no um even with Acuna in series two in twenty eighteen, twenty nineteen Vlad, there was there wasn't an auto, right? The mystery auto came from series one. So it's right. uh it's 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 good that they put put another chase in those uh in those yeah. eighty seven inserts. So do you know if those autos are sticker or on? You know what? I want to say they're on card autos. Uh, I'm pretty sure they're on card nice. autos. If yeah, they are, if they are um, yeah, sweet. Yeah. So there's yeah you there's there's some chase to it. It's okay. Yeah, it's not well, all bad. Have, yeah. Young, you might have we to might take have back to... your words, man. It sounds like a pretty good <laughs> uh, pretty good box. <laughs> I think we need to rip. <laughs> top series too it's about that time yeah all right 
Okay, let's move on to this week's hobby headlines. So guys, we're still in this bear market, and every time I check my portfolio value on Card Ladder, all I see is red. Like every day, is I'm in the minus, <laughs> and the value is decreasing day by day. But you know what? At the same time, some of the cards I've been eyeing are coming down in value pretty hard. So right. I thought it'll be interesting to go over some of these cards that we used to talk about a lot, especially when the market was hot, and you know, ask ourselves, in our opinion, is it a good time to buy or has the market downturn made us rethink who we should actually prioritize in buying, right? Like things have changed since uh, since February of 2020. So I can start this segment. Um, I'm going to start with our boy, Lewis Robert. You know, we, we love him. We still like his talent. But believe it or not, his 2018 Bowman Chrome Rookie Autograph base card, which is graded BGS 9.5 Gen Mint 10 Auto, sold last week in a PWCC auction for $660, which is the cheapest uh, it's ever been. Yeah, yeah, I think so too. And, you know, normally I would be all over that because that sounds so cheap (laughs) compared to what that card's historical high was. But like I like I said in the intro to the segment, in this market, if I'm looking to flip, I'm kind of want more of these short term holds with a little more vol- volatility, right? Mm. And you know, Lewis Robert is having a decent season, but he's not doing amazing. Like the 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 hype that he had in his rookie season, he's not batting to that potential, right? It's right. it's kind of like his the White Sox. They're yeah. the five hundred team, surprisingly. Right, <laughs> and right. they're not they're not hyped up as much as they were last year. So to be honest, I almost rather spend that six, seven hundred dollars on another card. And I was thinking like what would I spend it on? Like, you know, probably like a Shohei Tops Update Gold PSA ten. That sold for about seven hundred bucks. You right. know, like a guy like Shohei right. that's kind of in the news, historical guy, and he's he's killing it when he's pitching and batting. You know, maybe I take a gamble there instead of, you know, Lewis Robert. So right. I don't know. What do you guys think? So many to pick from. So many. Um, yeah. We talked about this, like, it must have been a couple of weeks ago, but uh, we're talking off here about Juan Soto. And I'm so big, you know, this whole group, we're all three of us are big on Juan Soto just because he's in such a unique position within the modern hobby space, ultra mm-hmm. modern. And what, you know, we're talking about high printing and all of that conversation is coming into play. And Juan Soto... It was just a perfect storm of happenstance that one of the superstars in the game happened to come out an update and just have a very limited selection of rookie cards within Ultra Modern. So I think right. he's, it, if you were to ever really hone in on somebody, I think somebody like Juan Soto, and coupled with the fact that you got market downturn slash possible recession, which is probably going to happen. And then you have Juan Soto batting like 210 or something, whatever he's he's in the worst slump of his life. So I think this is just like a perfect, perfect opportunity. And we, again, what I was saying about what we just talked about a couple of episodes ago, uh, perfect example is the pink, pink refractor from Topps Chrome Update, PSA 10. Literally three or four episodes ago, we we're talking about it being at 1500 and... The last couple of sales, the lowest one sold for, uh, I think it was like seven sixty five or seven seventy. Wow. Yeah, so half off. Yeah, and I mean, I you could probably put good money on that. This card could probably drop even further, maybe six six fifty six hundred. So, mm-hmm. like, that's an entry into a short printed flagship card, and for those that don't know. Juan Soto's update doesn't even have many parallels be- to begin with, right? You got pink refractor, you got X refractor, you got the regular refractor. Right. Young, young, we talked about it. Even the colors, it's just gold, red, orange, and super, right? So you got, there's really, you know, it's not, and it's not even like you can get after gold or you can get after red. They are just aren't around. So you're really only left with hmm. refractor, X refractor, pink refractor. Right. Um, so entry into short printed Juan Soto could in the next couple of months be five six hundred bucks who knows so just just one to watch for me that's the tops update you meant you were talking about top chrome. chrome update yeah pink refractor chrome update and i'm sure okay. on the on the flip side for paper like the the rainbow is probably 
just as cheap, right? If not right. even cheaper. No, I I I like I like though that pick, uh, John, just because we talk about it before the the scarcity of uh, kind of like Juan Soto's cards and how that's gonna like play long term, right? And right. that just gives you a lot more confidence in paper parallels with Juan Soto. So his update gold tops uh paper and his independence day his father's day his mother's day like his black that's why they they there's there's so much because there's there's no other parallel of juan soto rookie cards right so i think long term they're they're great and i i I don't i got cut off uh when when we're talking about robert luis robert when you're talking about I, i guess clark brought it up but uh Mm -hmm. the thing that worries about me about robert is like the expectation is like you know, now he's 24. He's not 21, 22 anymore. He's 24. Right. He's been injured. And, you know, he's he's expected to put up numbers, which he's he's been hidden well uh, in terms of his average. But, like, he's he's he's, he's, not has eight, he's eight home runs uh, on pace for maybe 20 to 25 this year. Like, mm-hmm. and those are the things that I think, um, you know, people are starting to recognize. And that's that's where it 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 becomes a tough sell right mm-hmm. whereas like Juan Soto right. you know he has a batting title he has a you know MVP he has a a, 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 a world series you know and he has he's on pace for you know a hundred plus career war you know a trajectory right so it's like until mm-hmm. Luis Robert like puts up like 300 average 30 plus 100 plus RBIs and is right. like on a winning Chicago team, I think he's going to correct till, you know, till he proves that. Right. So his, yeah. I think his prices are going to keep on following. Like even his top scrum mm. base, it's like 15 bucks, like yeah. 20 bucks. <laughs> like it's so ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. I, I feel good about selling it for 30 bucks at the sports card expo. That was, yeah. It's a great, <laughs> it's, that was a great, great sell. <laughs> you can't give those away. Yeah. I know. Crazy. That's a really good point. Okay, I'm going to throw a, a player at you guys, and you tell me if you're buying or not, okay? Because okay. this, this value has dropped hard, okay? So at the peak, this highly touted prospect sold f- for a uh, BGS 9.5 Auto 10 of his Bowman Chrome Prospect Auto, sold for $4,500. Okay. Has never played a Major League Baseball game yet, okay? okay? This is going to give it away. He's a New York Yankees prospect. Okay. Is it- and his his last one sold for six hundred fifty. This is a refractor. Sorry, four ninety nine auto no, four ninety nine refractor Bowman Chrome prospect auto. Who Jeez. is it? Jason, Jason Dominguez? Dominguez. Yeah, Jason it Dominguez. Been, yeah, yeah. Wow. six fifty for a refractor Bowman Chrome <laughs> BGS nine five. And then, you know, remember the hype? Right. Like, yeah. For thousands. So yeah, it's. What are you guys doing with Dominguez? Oh man, this this one's hard for me. Like I I, I haven't checked the stats uh, lately and what he's been doing, but I know he w- got off to a really slow start. So that really, like people are like, this guy's like the hype, like, yeah. and a mm-hmm. lot of people went off of him right there, right? But then he started picking it up. I haven't checked recently how he's doing, but he's still young. Like that's the thing. Mm-hmm. It's like he's so young. Nineteen years old. He's nineteen yeah. years Holy old, cow. and he's he he's already here. Um, you know, playing in 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 pro ball essentially, right? He, like there's there's a lot of you know, um, players who stay on the islands and they don't come here until they're they're a little older. So it's like for me, it's like Dominguez came here young. He has a lot of experience already. As you know, I think seventeen, eighteen year old is when he entered the league and got professional at bats here. So. I think he's um, like it's too early to tell, so it's like I don't mind that play as much because, like, as opposed to a Luis Robert, for instance, because Dominguez could still, you know, all of a sudden figure it out, right? And then he he ends up having you know an enormous m- a minor league season, which is way easier to do than a major league season, right? And then all of a sudden he's in a top ten prospect again, you know, and then what happens to his prices in terms of we talked about the volatility right so it's like how low can it go and then if you buy at the bottom um you know it's not a bad gamble i would say because you know if dominguez figures is it figures it out it could you know potentially you know go not obviously go back to where it was because 2020 bowman was released right in the hype of uh kind of like the the covid right era right so i think 
I remember Bowman Hobby boxes are like seven hundred fifty bucks, which is ridiculous. You chasing one auto, and because yeah. Dominguez was like twenty thousand dollars or whatever, right? So yeah. that hype was uh, was too big, way too big for 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 a prospect. And at that time, no one was even on Bobby Witt Jr. Right. right, he was like the secondary chase, and his his prices went for nothing. Everything was on uh, Dominguez, right? And then in that set, you had Volpe too, who who was up and coming. But yeah, I think Dominguez is uh, he was way overpriced to begin with, and way yeah. overhyped. So it's like how how low can it go? And that might not be a bad buy in. Yeah, hmm. yeah. I feel like with Bowman first, that's the game, right? You either play in that space when it first releases, and you're you're breaking and you're selling. You gotta sell, you're all, yeah. You're all up in that at, at the beginning, yeah. and then there is probably going to be another opportunity later on when that prospect starts to get close to making the majors, and there's another run up, right? Uh, so Jason Dominguez is just one of those players where you just shouldn't touch him in that space in that first year of release, and then now is the time, and now this is like. When you're talking about Jason Dominguez, you're talking about Luis Robert, and we talk about this all the time. Do your research, mm-hmm. right? If especially easy for somebody like Young, who's ex-pro, he knows what he's looking at. A little bit more difficult for the peasants like Clark and I <laughs> trying to figure things out. Yeah, I have but do no your clue own what research. I'm like, at it. Watch, watch, <laughs> <laughs> but watch clips. Look at trends. Look at their career path. How they're doing. And then if you are convinced yourself, don't let what is happening to the hobby st- let you stray away from mm-hmm. your your ideology or what you believe in, right? So if Clark and I really believe in Luis Robert, but the rest of the industry, like, you know, thinks like Hyung saying, ah, you know, Luis Robert, I've given him a chance. It's been three years. He's kind of injury prone. Yeah, his batting average is pretty good, but his OPS is not good and his... You know he's not really the slugging, creating. You know, and and WAR numbers aren't that great. I don't I don't know if I believe in it any anymore, right? But if you're like Clark and I, and, and you've done your research and you do believe in it, this is an even better opportunity. If you believe in Jason Dominguez, to scoop him up when everybody is off him, right? That is it's, it's what happened with Vladdy. Mm. It's what happened to Shohei. And I mean, it doesn't come with its risk. You can go all in when everybody's not in. And you can lose it all as well, right? But if you're in the if you're in the mindset to try and really exponentially win on some of these plays, you certainly have to go for things when people are off it, and you try and go in and make the play, right? Mm-hmm. So this is where research really comes in comes into play and can help you out. Just just throwing it out there, guys. His comps. Like comps, as in not like price comps, but his comps, as in like player comps. That's, player. Yeah. Right. Player comps. Okay, this is this is crazy. I I didn't know this, but this is ridiculous. Come on, like this is on MLB, like mm-hmm. you know the website. <laughs> Bo Jackson, <laughs> Mick, Mickey Mantle, mm-hmm. Mike Trout. Come on, that is that, all, that all is the, very optimistic. All the writers are from New York. They're just drinking that cola. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> For real, yeah, that's crazy. But I, yeah, those are like big if, names if that, to be compared to. Those are big yeah. names, yeah. So there Bo, is, there you know is what? a Bo Jackson. Bo Jackson, actually, no, sorry. <laughs> Bo Jackson is you're, ridiculous. You're, no, yeah, I was gonna say because you know Dominguez is a monster. Right? This is like nineteen year old kid that's like Bo Jackson was a monster. Two forty, two sixty <laughs> jacked. Yeah. But people don't realize like Bo Jackson because the younger folks that are listening to the, the you don't you know you don't know who, who Bo Jackson was. This guy was the ultimate athlete yeah, a pro sure. in like two three sports like he was ridiculously athletic um yeah so we, we would certainly be downplaying bo jackson to compare him to like this big jason dominguez man yeah but man those that's are, that's those are some hefty comparisons yeah so i mean mlb has has its optimism so that's where a lot of I is guess, that a, people... is that a recent article that's yeah his scouting basically a scouting report mm. signed for 5.1 million you know, and he has a power sixty. Like sixty is pretty pretty good for his age right now. What's the scale? Like right. nineteen years old. It's out of eighty. You know, fifty fifty being the major league average, twenty lowest mm. grade you could possibly get. But right. I mean, most prospects are floating between that fifty. You know, fifty and sixty. Mm-hmm. You know, guys like Flatty. You know, flash eighty on on their hit tool. So. Mm. 
Uh, Dominguez is 55 for his hit right now. Power 60, run 55, arm 55, field 55, overall 55. As a 19 year old, that's pretty. That's pretty, that's pretty good. good. Yeah, it's pretty yeah. damn good. Yeah. So, um, he, they they project him as like a a pretty big power guy. So it's like, and that comes with age, as everybody knows. Like, sure. you know, you, you're you're a kid. You're he's still a kid, right? Yeah. Unless, yeah, you don't even yeah. have that adult body. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I, but that's the thing. It could go sideways. Like I don't. He, Dominguez looks like he's thirty years old already. So it's like, <laughs> well, what's his adult gonna, body gonna look like? You know, <laughs> a senior citizen by the time he really is thirty. Yeah, he might be the same age as Albert Pujols. God dang. <laughs> Yeah, I just want to bring him up because you know the combination of the overhypeness when the when his cards first came out as a seventeen year old at that time, right? And um, right. and just how far it's dropped. Like for me personally, super super tempting. I love playing in that space about like that that five hundred right. to seven hundred dollars. You know where I can right. you know if everything bangs right, it's it could three x and that or even more. Like right, that's right. Like, you know, I always come down to this. Like that's why I bought the Shohei at five fifty. Like I look for those like ones that could really jump if everything breaks. And then you know, for me that worked out to uh, three thousand, three thousand five hundred, right? And I think right, Dominguez right, right. could do it. if you hold it on for two, three, four years at this yeah, price. It for could sure. be an amazing deal. But and it, it could it could even be next year. You know, like that's mm. what I'm saying. It's like he he's not having a great minor league season this year. But what if he has a great like instructs or he comes back next year and just ha- is on fire next year? You know, there's going to be that hype again, right? Mm-hmm. Sure. And you, you're you're there ready to you know sell that. Yeah. So the pedigree's there. People know him. Well, his most sure. uh, while we we're talking about this, I was like looking on the news for Dominguez and his most recent one three days ago. It says he hit a bomb. <laughs> it's a seventh uh-huh. homer. Uh, playing down in Tampa, so yeah, that's pretty looks good. Like he's picking up a little bit. Nineteen year old, yeah. And you know, like you know what? Honestly, just the way the Yankees are playing, just dominating the league so far, like they won't need Jason Dominguez this year. So that right. might right. like you don't have to rush him. That might just like depress his value even more. Not by his own right. skill set. Just the Yankees don't need anyone in the lineup right now. Um, so that that might push it down further. And you know, it'll be really interesting if it goes down below six hundred. For his uh, first Bowman Chrome auto. Right. Refractor. That's crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. All right. I have uh, stuff. I have one more to throw at you. I don't want to make this too baseball centric. I promise the next uh, segment will cover different sports. But, you know, we talk about Mookie Betts a lot. And I was just curious about his some of his rookie auto cards. So, you know, one I've been eyeing personally, the 2014 Topps Heritage real one autograph cards you know i think mm-hmm. kyung and i were both really big fans of that set huge fans um, yeah so the the last one sold a bgs 9.5 10 auto grade sold on june 2nd for 12.50 right yeah um, it's a great deal and an sgc 9.5 10 auto sold for 875 so like it's right. getting to that point where for guys like mookie that's already Kind of like um, Juan Soto a little bit, you know, like had playoff success, right. won a World Series championship, um, MVP, or in in that in that in those talks, like you know he's already got a good resume behind him. I don't mind right. going after those guys at its right. depressed value. You know what I mean? It's especially yeah, the older sure. cards, like we talk about, like uh, how you know print run 2013, 2014 era, like it wasn't. It was a hobby. That's it. That's the only thing that mm. existed. So, like cards like the Heritage, like try finding any like Heritage like uh, auto of Mookie Betts. Even people who are selling, you know. And I don't like as as time goes by and as their careers are established. I'm telling you guys, like the Heritage real one autos, they're tough to find. You don't yep. you don't see them, and that's why I don't mind these during a recession because. They're long-term holds, and you know you're not going to really see too many of them. I think you're going to see a lot more cards go first before a Mookie Real One Auto. Somebody ca- cashes that on that, yeah, unless they sure. absolutely have to, right? Especially at like six, seven hundred bucks. Come on, like I'm a I'm a buyer there. Like if if, but that's the thing. It's like I think a lot of people are. It's just a matter of if you're if you could find one and it's the right time to pull the trigger, right? Even even that scenario is hard to kind of come by like to even be able to purchase one right so um i i personally love the real one auto um reading is like a, a bonus bonus but yeah, it's crazy. like uh 
Yeah, Mookie Betts, I I love that buy just because, you know, Mookie Betts doesn't have too many rookie cards too. He has his Topps Chrome update, uh, which goes for a lot. That even that is six hundred to a thousand bucks, right? Mm-hmm. So if that's selling for that much, then I'd rather have a real one auto at kind of like that same price point, right? Yeah. Right. So Yeah. I think just you know, going back to the very beginning, uh Clark, you're questioning on like initial Mm-hmm. thoughts and like how how low price prices can go um when i study because you know i'm in real estate when i study real estate um i'm with young and in, in, in thinking that i think prices can get a lot lower you know it, here in canada they're gonna jack up the rate um the interest rate again probably next month and possibly another time in september um and it's really a, you know basically you're studying human behavior at this point right Anytime things like this happen, it's not necessarily that people are absolutely broke and they can't afford it. It's just everybody gets into the mindset of being cautious, Mm -hmm. a little bit weary, and and they'll stand off and kind of take a break on certain behaviors, right? So I think for people in Toronto and Canada, you know, the expo that's coming up in November, I think that's a great starting point to potentially start to look really look at some, some good cards. And then uh, from November to probably like very early spring, February. That's that's my personal, complete personal opinion. Mm-hmm. I, I think that can be a great position to buy. And, you know, we always talk about this, right? Like, I think everybody in the hobby space oh, in the last couple of years says this. Oh, I wish pre-pandemic I would have had the no, the, <laughs> the wherewithal to spend the money then and to buy these cars for super cheap. Oh, I regret it so much. Wish I had that opportunity again. And man, I think maybe that opportunity is about to be upon us now. And some people can say, "Oh, you're just trying to you're trying to just trying to pump and dump or whatever," you know. But think about this, right? Think about where prices were pre-pandemic, and I you would probably agree with me that a lot of the cards right now are back to pre-pandemic pricing, mm-hmm. right? Especially yeah. somebody like Luca, literally his cards are maybe even worse than pre-pandemic pricing. And I, would, I think most people would agree, uh, minus investors and sneakerheads and people that just kind of came in for the quick flips and, and are leaving the space now, possibly. Most people would probably agree a lot more hobbyists came back into it versus pre-pandemic, like actual people that are continually looking to spend money and enjoy the hobby. I think a lot more people are in it. So you're talking about a lot more people in it but we have pre-pandemic pricing. So I think at some point when you just literally weigh those two together, at some point for me, I could really see prices uh, bouncing back and the, the, the demand overall being there. So yeah, um, I, I truly believe there is going to be a purchasing time uh, coming up pretty shortly. So I like that's that. my opinion. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I agree with a lot of those points. You know, I think... Um... You know, at the end of the day, like we always say, collect what you love, right? So, you know, right. this is especially true during these times. And, you know, for sure, we're not giving you any guy, we're not giving you guys financial advice or anything like that. But yeah, this is just kind of our conviction and we love the hobby. And uh, yeah, you know, you can't lose if you collect what you love. And, and, uh, mm-hmm. but, you know, for the flippers out there, like, you know, I'm still interested in finding good investments to, to work my way up for bigger cards. And, you right. know, I think they're, are opportunities there but uh, i'm not saying like oh you know um every card's going to be a hit like you really got to be selective now especially during these right. times like that's just being real so right as long as this bear market lasts you know we'll always hit on these kind of topics for our podcast episodes because you know we, we don't want to like create a rosy picture when it's you know it's pretty pretty grim looking there in some some areas of the market especially uh, you know even with the sports card market too but uh, I thought it'd be good um, just to see where some of these prices are. And yeah, if you can afford to buy some of these cards, yeah, you know, it might be a good opportunity to, to do that. All right, let's go on to our next segment. We're calling Chasing Goats. So we teased this in our last Friday episode. And, um, you know, we, we also talked about it before that in this kind of market, looking at investing in goat players might be the more wise thing to do if you have the money, right? So, uh, and that's because all prices are coming down, including GOAT players, and there might be good opportunities, probably, you know, 
opportunities that we haven't seen in the last two, three years uh, that we're seeing now to snag one of these top players. So for this segment, I came up with a list of four to five GOAT players and got the value of their iconic rookie cards at the peak of the hobby. Most of the peak is, you'll see that it's around February, March of 2021. Um, And then I compared it to the last sold value. And I just want to know if you guys are tempted at any of the current prices or if you're waiting for it to go even lower, okay? I think I think some of the listeners might be surprised at the significant drop in value for some of these GOAT cards too. So it'll be interesting to see uh, your reaction to them. Okay, let's start with the Mike Trout Tops Update PSA 10. What, what year was the Tops Update again? The 2011. 2011, thank you. Uh, 2011 Tops Update PSA 10 Mike Trout. In February 2021, it sold for about $7,000, PSA 10. And the last sold, crazy. For, yeah, last sold for 2300 What do you Damn. guys think with that card in particular? I'm not, I'm waiting. Okay. I think, I think, I think true value on that card is around 1200 bucks. Oh, wow. And the reason why I say that is, is I, I don't know. Do you guys, do you have the pop uh, report? I'm just looking at it right now. 5000 Maybe, maybe less, maybe more. I don't know. I don't know these days. 5,718. There you go. So, so yeah, like I, I just, I just don't see it holding. There's too many. Mm -hmm. There's too many. And I've, I've seen that card. I remember when that card was pre 1000. So it's like, and it was right before, uh, probably the pandemic. Um, so it's, I, I, I truly believe like, because it's a base card at the end of the day, and yeah. we talk about short printed base cards of, um, like Acuna Pop Two Hundred, big difference between a Pop Five Thousand. So how can it sustain that price at two thousand three hundred, even with this uh kind of recession coming up? I think it's gonna dip lower. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna say I'm I'm a buyer at around twelve hundred, maybe a thousand even. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, that's insight there. Johnny, you buy? Um, no, I, I agree with Young. I'm I'm a wait on it. I personally, you know, I know for everyone who is a Mike Trout fan, this is like the holy grail flagship card. Uh, for me, I don't know. I, maybe it's the influence of what's been happening with base. But on a personal level, I'm not that interested in his iconic update card for some reason. Like, I think it's just too boring you know <laughs> as much as it, it is an iconic image so for me you know I, obviously i would love a mike trout card in my possession at some point but for me i would probably target something else now with that being said if you are in the space to want this card you've always wanted it this is the holy grail i will agree with young's assessment i didn't realize it, it could go down to 1200 but i was gonna say something like 15 16 but i mean 1200 is pretty close enough mm-hmm. um but I can certainly, I'd put money on it for sure that it would go sub 2K. Um, so yeah, if you're in the space to want this card and always wanted it, there is going to be a time for you to pick it up in the next little bit. Yeah, no, I totally agree with you. Uh, Hyung, especially with that pop count, it's just too high. for mm. And it's and it, it's a base card, um, uh, even if it's a PSA 10. But uh, yeah, I would definitely wait. Further. All right, I won't belabor that point. Let's go on to another popular, essentially, base card um, of LeBron James. Of course, the Topps Chrome PSA 10. Last, uh, the sold February 2021, if you can believe it, for $43,000. My goodness. <laughs> that's My one. Goodness. That's a Pico top right there. And um, it last sold for $8,000. 43000 yes. to 8000 yeah, so LeBron James, you got same kind of feeling with that, he, or is it different? It's it's a little different for me um, because I'm he's one of the guys that I would target, uh, especially his tops Chrome because it is a lower. Uh, yeah. Even though it's the a pop base, count is twenty one eighty six. Yeah, so that even then I'm I'm kind of hesitant. Uh, at that price point, at that eight thousand dollar price point, mm. I I know we mentioned it Friday, like. I'd be interested in a conversation at 5k. 
Okay. You know, and then I, I would like it to even go lower because <laughs> I, re- I remember when those were like be- November 2019, right before the pandemic, mm-hmm. 2,500 I passed. And then 3,000 I yeah. passed, too expensive. 3,500. I was like, okay, what's going on? And then it just kept on going up from there. So I'm, I'm guessing that it's going to retract back to those prices. Mm. Uh, maybe, maybe a little better because LeBron, you know, aged, I, I guess he didn't really do much in the last year. So, um, but he did win a championship, I believe the year before. So, yeah. um, I think, I think a true value might be around three and a half to five K on that card okay. based on its pop report. Wow. Oh man, Young is a uh, he's savage, man. He's really hammering these <laughs> cards. Jeez. Well, I I just think that we're we we're not even in a recession yet, so it's yeah. like oh, when when, you, when when we're when we're talking recession, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, we're talking thirty to fifty sure. percent off from this, right? Yeah. So yeah. no, I agree. Is there a sell button for LeBron? Because I would like to. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I'm with Young. It's uh, I think most of the cards on the list are going to be a wait, but. 8K, I can certainly see it falling. Uh, I was going to guess at a minimum to 6,500. Uh, I wasn't as harsh as Hyung, but you know, I could see it. <laughs> Whatever Hyung is saying, I'll, I'll believe it too. I could see that happening as well. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, you guys know me. I'm just not, you know, this wasn't, it is, an, it is an iconic card, yes. If you're a LeBron, if you love LeBron, this is probably high on your list of a card that you want as a collector. Uh, it just isn't for me, so... Um, I don't. I really don't notice. Even at 8K, even at 5K, uh, LeBron's probably, just not for you. <laughs> just not for me, LeBron man. Hater. There's just so many other cards that I would rather have. But I can <laughs> certainly understand. I think if from an investment side, uh, at four or 5K, it is certainly something to look at for sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. For for me, it's similar in the sense that it's a base card. I don't want to spend that kind of money on a base yeah, card. That's what you it know? is. Um, and yeah, it's funny because I think one of my one v ones in in the episode um, two three four months ago was like, "Do you see this LeBron? This exact LeBron James tops Chrome PSA ten going under ten k? Like, wow, okay, that's that's happened. So that's you know, and and you know, who could have predicted?" just uh what the economy is at now but um right. but yeah like i think it could, it could certainly go down further i i expect it to actually um you know what i'm doing though is like with these especially with basketball tops chrome cards i'm really interested in the refractors like i right. would be willing to pay a little bit more to get a nice the, the Chrome play. refractor right you know? like a psa 9 like refractor a, psa whatever yeah exactly even with a slightly lower grade you know 100%. that's i like that play better yeah yeah. So, and you know, right now, if you look at it, it's still expensive, right? For yeah. these keys, key cards. But as everything comes down, if it comes down enough, yeah, I might pull the trigger on one of the top score refractor at a lower nice. grade. All right, let's go on to football. Patrick Mahomes. I should have gone with Tom Brady. I don't know why I went with Patrick Mahomes. <laughs> Maybe I'll go search. <laughs> Maybe I don't I'll... think Brady's aff- affordable. <laughs> Maybe, yeah, still, still not. Yeah. Uh, so let's go with Patrick Mahomes. His Panini Prism PSA 10 rookie card. In April of 2021, it sold for $12,000. And it last sold for 3700 So a third Crazy. of the price. <laughs> That's like optic hollow price Oof. when we were saying bye, bye, bye. Yeah, exactly. It's insane. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I'm too I'm high. <laughs> I'm going to look at this pod count. Yeah, yeah, I think. I think prices are too high. Eight ninety two. Eight ninety two. That's not bad. That's. Mm-hmm. that's I a honestly big time rather card, man. That's a silver. I, I think it, I rather have his XRC to be honest. Yeah. Um, you know, and I I don't know what the prices are at that point, but like it's more for uh, sure. Yeah, it, it, but at the I, I remember it was when it dropped. It was about ten to twelve k as well. So it was it was at the peak of his silver, maybe. You know what? Um, you're right. You're right. I'll, I just looked it up. At its peak in February of 2021, sold for 16k, right. and the last one sold for well 5,200. Five. So it's 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 relatively mm. the same kind of ratio, right? And but, the pop count's 208, so a lot yeah, more. Yeah, yeah. So right. I like that's. I I like the play just because the pop count is lower, but I think his Panini silver. Uh, still will dip even even more. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, but I'm, I think I'm a buyer uh, potentially of his XRC if it dips like below that 5K, 4K mark. It's a, yeah. it's a, I think I like that look of that card better too. Oh, it's the amazing. XRC is so nice. Yeah. Yeah. It's sweet. And XRC yeah. is a year before, right? So technically it's his yeah, first. Yeah, 2016. It's his first yeah. card. True. Yeah. Oh, man, that's a good, I mean, that's a good price. I think. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, I, I would imagine it's obviously based on what Hyung has been saying, based on what I believe. I, you know, I, uh, for me, I see. 20 to 30 percent more drop uh in the next little while hyung is obviously see something like 50 but you know you could see this card being at like 25 low twos perhaps there's support at low some support at low two but man at a, if it's at like 2100 2200 that's that's pretty crazy to me to have like and his prism year i don't think there was a base right if i'm not mistaken yeah. i think it's just right, straight right. to straight to silver Mm-hmm. man yep. and this is like you know this is his main this is the this is the juice man this is the main card right mm-hmm. uh yeah in the in the two low twos to 2500 that is a great price if you believe it you still believe in Mahomes. yeah i like it i like it personally yeah it looks like the we were seeing a trend here we're still waiting for it to go down <laughs> for sure uh, for sure yeah. i think that's mm-hmm. the wise move but it's interesting to see how far it's dropped even now now that in, we're not even in a full blown recession right, yet either, right. so um, yeah, I'm gonna agree with you guys. You know, just for fun, I looked up Tom Brady's Bowman Chrome, his PSA 10 base Bowman Chrome, at its peak sold for uh, twenty six thousand in February of 2021, mm-hmm. and last sold for half that twelve thousand five hundred. Hmm. Pop count one thousand one hundred. I want a Tom Brady so bad, but I don't yeah, like the Bowman. I don't like the Bowman Chrome, and it's again this sort of like base thought true. process yeah. of base. It's just too but boring. Like, Bowman, but I think that Bowman Chrome is is such an iconic card, though. That's that's the only thing it does have. It is is that like a lot of buyers in that in that card. Sure, a sure. Lot. Yeah, I'm just it's like I'm just I'm just off it, man. Like I, you know, and my prime example we talked about it was Kobe. It's the like SPX. My, yeah, my holy grail Kobe card is his Topps Chrome rookie card. But mm-hmm. as I sit here today, if somebody were to ask me if you had six, seven, whatever it's going for, six, seven, eight thousand dollars, would you spend it on the top screw on PSA ten? No, I wouldn't anymore. Right. As much as I do think it was a holy grail, there are just so many cooler. Like I would go right. for a flawless patch auto of Kobe at that price. You know, like a PS, even if it's a PSA eight, right? So mm-hmm. I'm off it. But I for I would love to have Tom Brady, as you mentioned, Tom Brady. But at the top, at the Bowman Chrome PSA 10 level, I would for me, I would rather target the SB Authentic PSA 8. Yeah, I think they go for kind of like roughly the same price. Like yeah. for me, that's such a cool, way cooler, it's more limited too, yeah. purchase. Yeah. yeah, So that that's that that's kind of the route, route I would take. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, I still like the Optic Hollow for Mahomes <laughs> better. Me too. So, so, imagine, uh, imagine yeah. we can pick it up for like nine hundred. Oh man, that'd be gone so fast <laughs> if that's what it's listed at. Yeah, yeah, we'll just wait and see for that. But um, but yeah, it'll be interesting to see how Mahomes cards, especially with the NFL season is coming up. I think I think out of all the sports, football is going to pick up sooner than the other sports, right? So right. so I I don't know what the window is to buy some of these prices low. It, you know, it might do one of those like it might start trending upwards and then come back down a bit. Uh, right. The timing is going to be tricky, but um, yeah, that's football cards for you. All right, let's uh, go on to hockey. I just chose Connor McDavid, his Young Guns PSA 10. Last sold for 4000 in November of 2021. So not that long ago, and it sold uh, recently for 2700 So out of all the ones we've heard, this is the, less, the least volatility. But what do you yeah. think with McDavid's Young Guns PSA 10? Hmm. Do you know the pop count on that I'll one? I'll look that up right now. It's probably like six fifty ish, or actually, yeah. probably actually more than that. Probably under a thousand. Under a thousand, I guess. Yeah. Young Guns PSA ten. His pop count is two thousand three hundred twelve. Oh shoot! shoot. <laughs> That's... Wow. And Young Guns is such a base card. Like I, I had a, another I, base. I, yeah. I had a, I had a McDavid uh, Young Guns and. 
a PSA 10 and I ended up selling it for around 4k at the time or just under, I think. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I was like, I don't think this card is worth three and a half, 4k. Um, but then you look at like cards like a Vetchkin, you know, and you know what they've done, uh, what he's done kind of this year. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think his, his young guns went up to like 10 K at one point, which is, ridiculous Crazy. right but then it's right. it's retracting as well um i mean Connor mcdavid for me is a buy in general um i probably wouldn't buy his young guns to be honest i think there's so much so many more like better options out there than his young guns card um but i think if if the price drops to you know under 2k i think it's something that is worth looking into for sure right because yeah, i think right. i think it is it is a card if you're if you're a hockey collector and you know you believe in Connor McDavid, you know that's kind of like a a target card that I think I think you should have, right? So, yeah. and you know what they show promise. You know they 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 went pretty deep into the playoffs, which is something that they like it was never supposed to happen, right? Or we were questioning when it was going to happen. So, you know there's there's a little hype behind that too, and um, I think I think under two thousand is a buy. Yeah. I mean, if there's ever a hockey player to chase, it's definitely Connor McDavid. Um, yeah, I'm kind of like with you, Young Guns, on a personal level, it, it just doesn't really do it for me. But I can completely understand it. If you, It's entry level. It's actually really expensive entry level. Um, but it's as liquid as it gets, right? So on the trade floor, whatever you want to do with the card later, it just makes a lot of sense to go after the Young Guns. Me personally... Especially if you're thinking about somebody like McDavid long term, and I think McDavid certainly is one of those players that you can have confidence in to hold long term. That I won't, he's not going to go anywhere unless some freak injury happens. But he is on that Soto. He's actually higher. To be honest, he's he's higher than Soto and and Luca. Like this guy is unbelievably generational. So mm-hmm. you can have the utmost confidence to like really invest long term. With that being said. You know, with the young guns at 2,700, like for me, I'm really looking, honing in on like secondary sets. So I know for hockey, Opera Deck is, you know, that's the company. But you can look at, you know, Conor McDavid. Not many people know, but Conor McDavid has like a skybox. Mm. There's McDavid skybox numbered out of 499 and it just sold on PS, PSA 10. I think it went for like 1250, right? Yeah. Numbered, rookie year. Like for wow. me, for half the price, Long term, I think that's such a better play. I think there's so much opportunity for McDavid because as Young Guns becomes unavailable, right. uh, people are going to want anything of McDavid. And when they look, you know, even something like Skybox, it's going to be super, super short printed. Um, I think those are cards that can really exponentially grow in the future. So, and if you have more money, to be honest, to be really honest, if you have more money to spend than two thousand or twenty five hundred or four thousand. I would try to target uh, the SB Authentic Auto in yeah, any future grade. Future Watch Auto, yeah. The Future Watch in any grade. Like even if it's a PSA 7, I would much rather target that for five grand or whatever it would go for. Would you crack it and, and get an Authentic Auto <laughs> head slap? Yeah, yeah. I, I probably, to be honest, I probably would. But I think if, you can, if you're in that level to try and squeeze your way into like Future Watch at any grade, I think that's the move. Yep. Yeah. That's that's one of my grail cards for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, you know, it's just kind of a boring segment because we're all off base, right? We <laughs> I need to find someone that loves base, and then we could really debate <laughs> for this. Oh, for that's, this, a, that's a tough that's a tough one right now for man. this segment. But uh, and I, you know, in in the last week's episode, Will was saying how he hates when we all agree. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, but sorry, you can't Will. force it. <laughs> I know. Yeah, so um, I won't I won't add to that, but yeah, um, I was never really a big fan of Young Guns, anyways, because of the fact that it's based. But it is I can't argue how liquid it is, especially up here in Toronto, Canada. Yeah, um, yeah. when we go to local card shows, that's it's changed hands so many times. But right, all right, um, you know, I want to include this last one real quickly. It's you know he's not a goat player, obviously, because he's so young. But um, in the hobby, it's one of the more iconic modern cards. Luka Doncic's Silver Prism basketball card, rookie, PSA 10. You know, in the hype, March 2021, 
is sold for 9K, $9,000. And the last one sold for 1900 I bought one for 2300 thinking that was a good deal. Right. So at what point, and we thought there would be resistance at 2K, right? Like I think in one of our episodes, we mentioned that. So it's kind of went beyond 2K at this point, 1900 you know, I wouldn't be surprised if it goes down further than that. More. But yeah, what do you think? What's the pop count on that? Sorry, two twenty one hundred. Yeah, twenty one hundred. Like yeah. Eh, oh, man, he's dude. He's so young. Oh my god, he's still twenty two so years old. Four mm-hmm. years in the league. Like, it's not that I'm giving up on Luca, but like for me, it's like he's gonna have to start. Like Dallas needs to do something. He needs he needs some help. He needs. He needs to win. Yeah. Well, he needs just, to win some brass. Mark Cuban, Charles, come on. They just picked up Charles. Oh yeah, that's Wood, right. So that's gonna be. That's right. That's gonna be um, yeah, I I really like Luca. I think he brings such a different dimension in the game of basketball, and you know, it, representing the European side, like it's it, it's such a growing game there, and he could bring that flavor into the NBA and be one of the best players in the NBA. He gets a lot of, I guess, uh, knocks because he doesn't win. Obviously, because his team is terrible. But like, he's 22 years old, three-time All Star, like, and a trajectory uh, of an amazing career. But I think a lot of people are saying this guy needs to win. He needs to win if he wants to be considered. If you want to talk about MJ, you want to talk about Steph Curry, LeBron. They all have brass. They mm-hmm. you, you need in, yeah. in basketball. You need brass. And he needs to start winning and prove that he's a guy that can, if he's considered the goat, you gotta, you gotta be the best, right? At the end of the day. So, um, like I said, he's 22 years old, too early to give up on. And if Anthony mm-hmm. Edwards is at a thousand bucks, like I, I think there's, yeah. if you're close to there, and even 1500, like. I wouldn't mind having a Luca Silver in my collection just because it was nine thousand at the peak, you know. It's like mm-hmm. that's it's it's ridiculous where it's at now. But I think I I like Luca. I just think he needs to win in order for him to sustain those prices that that he had. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's. I mean, you know, you guys know how I feel about Luca. I'm still trying to target a numbered card. Um. I don't know. 1500, 1400, 1300, 1200. I can't imagine how that's for me not a buy to get into his main rookie card silver in a parallel, in an OG parallel. Um, me on a personal level, though, and, and this is kind of biased because I just love the look of that year of Lucas Optic Hollow, but I'm kind of on the train of of Clark, your thought process on Patrick Mahomes. I think the, mm-hmm. if the prices really get that low, Let's say the silver prism is at like twelve fifty. I'll probably mean the optic is at like eight fifty, nine fifty. For me, I'm I'm probably going after I'm going after the optic hollow. So either way, Fair though, enough. I think either one of those cards. Um, yeah, I, I I for me it's a buy. I think Luca is. I think he is that special. Yeah, uh, definitely not giving up on Luca. I'm actually pretty pretty um bullish on luca especially next season i just feel like he came into this season out of shape i don't think he's going to do that again (laughs) um you know i think he's learned his lesson and you know they've done it like mark cuban's done it before with nowitzki like i know he can he can put a team together to support his star player you know Mm -hmm. and i'm i'm uh, banking on that but if it goes down to 12 1300 uh, I got I got to buy another one. Your dollar cost <laughs> averaging. averaging. Yeah, dollar cost average. Luca Dungeon Silver Prism all day. Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. Buy three, yeah. and then your your two thousand five hundred goes down to you know that fourteen hundred dollar range. You're good. Right. You, you read my mind. Can you can you believe not that long ago for these prices I was buying like two optic hollow bases. <laughs> yeah. It's insane. Uh, it was a different time in the hobby just uh, two years ago. Yeah. <laughs> All right, um, all right. That was a fun exercise. Uh, yeah, it's, you know, I think we might, we might even revisit this again at the end of summer just to see where things are at, you know. Right. Um, and uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I feel like one of us at least will grab one of these goat type players sometime this year, um, like we've always been talking about mm. during this bear market. So we'll see how that goes. All right, let's wrap up this show with our regular weekly segment we call Pick One. All right, and this is, of course, our 
favorite segment where we put up two cards or two sets and we debate which one we would rather invest in. All right, Hyung, do you want to start things off? Sure. I'm I'm sticking with baseball as usual. Uh, mm-hmm. I love my baseball and going more of a hobbyist approach here. Um, Acuna is a huge, obviously a hobby. Um, like people love him in the hobby as well. Huge collector. Is v- Pre-COVID is very tough to get his cards, actually. Mm, he was yeah. probably the biggest chase uh, pre-COVID. And um, we talked about this card earlier, the Bat Down, uh, 2018 Top Series 2 Acuna Bat Down, PSA 10. Mm-hmm. Um, so last the uh, couple sold for the the range of twelve hundred to fifteen hundred, and I think the pop count uh, is I want to say about two hundred, so it's pretty low. Um, okay. Versus a twenty eighteen tops update gold, which is numbered to twenty eighteen Acuna PSA ten, which sold for the same price twelve hundred mm-hmm. to fifteen hundred. So his series two bat down is uh kind of his flagship kind of like first rookie card short printed um very desirable iconic card and so is his top gold update um PSA 10 which has a pop of i believe just under 200 so the pop count is very very similar mm-hmm. the gold is a little more rare but the price right now the price point is the same so which mm-hmm. w- what are you going with if if i've only had a budget of let's just say 1500 bucks I narrowed it down to these two cards, you know, the bat down PSA 10 or the update gold PSA 10. That, Damn, that, a that is one. a tough, tough one. Uh, I struggle with this because Acuna bat down is one of the more iconic modern baseball cards and images. And I love that. I love that card. But at the same time, all of our minds have kind of, ch- you know, changed in the last little bit in terms of thinking of base or just, you know, normal paper rookie cards versus the tops update, which is not as, you know, desirable image, but it is the gold numbered. Oh, that's tough. <laughs> um I I don't know. I it's really a coin <laughs> honestly, honestly it's a it's a coin flip. But I'm gonna buy a hair. I think I'm gonna pick the gold. I think there's just so so much that's happening with this whole I mean, look at look at the way the three of us are thinking, right? I can you can only imagine the rest of the market if you took take sample size. I'm sure the a good chunk of the sample size is thinking the same way we are. So with the way with people are thinking, I think it's safer to put your money in number one numbered and number two, especially things that have the word gold in it, seems to be such mm-hmm. a huge buzzword in the hobby. Mm-hmm. So I think the the gold is the way to go. All right. Yeah, this is a hard one, actually, because, you know, I like, you know, when we got into the hobby, like, everyone was talking about the Ronald Acuna bat down. Right. Like, yeah. That's what people wanted, right? That was the card. It was the card. Yeah. And, you know, even, like, I didn't really care for it at the beginning, but because people talked about it so much, I'm like, damn, I kind of want one, too, now. Like, it's kind of <laughs> permeated into my brain that I want yeah. one. And then, so, like, it's it's become this thing for me, like, oh, it's kind of a almost like a flex too. Like, Oh, yeah. I got a oh, bat down in my collection. Right. So, um, but you know, like maybe it's the market downturn. Like you start to rethink everything, you know, right. you know what you thought about in the hobby and just have different perspectives on different cards. And I think as John alluded to, um, when he was picking his, uh, pick for this one V one, I'm in the same boat. Like at the end of the day, you know, it could fall out of favor, you know, like everyone's talking about the bat down and, you know, maybe, maybe a few years, it's not a big deal anymore. And at the same time, I just think gold is a standard, right? Mm-hmm. Like people that get into the hobby, they're going to look at a gold card and it's going to look nice, just uh, visual appealing to them. Right. And, and, uh, you know, add on top of that, it's numbered, you know, and, and, you know, like, uh, um, Pop count, I just checked for PSA 10, it's 187, so it's really yeah. low. Mm. I'm going with the the gold for sure this time. Nice. You know what? Like if um I think pre-COVID, the 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 answer of the majority oh, no would question. be bat down. Oh yeah, no and the, the, the reason was like people yeah. in the hobby, they don't believe the US 250, which is like 2018 tops update, the bat up. Bad they up. even designated it as bad up. Right. Um, it was kind of like the mass printed kind of like 
right. the crappy rookie card. And yeah. it shows. Like if you look at a PSA 10 bat up, it's uh, it goes for probably less than 100 bucks now or maybe about 100 bucks, right? Yeah. So uh, it's like do you want the parallel of the secondary set or the, kind of like the OG bat down, right? So that's where – and where it gets me is the 2018 like gold – any par- paper parallel in that set was money. Like they, there's no set better than 2018 tops. Right. Um, in terms yeah. of the paper parallel, like it is the most beautiful, especially the golds. So it, it's obviously tough for me, and I've owned both cards, and um, I'm actually gonna go bat down just because mm. I, I pre COVID, I'm going with my gut. Like, like nobody wanted the. It's not that nobody wanted the update. It was a secondary card. And yeah. the parallel, obviously, the chase were the independent day, the clear, the, you know. And gold was kind of like the, not the bottom of the barrel, but like it, it was like, okay, that was last. But now, obviously, you know, things kind of, you know, changed changed up a bit. So, but for me, it's like uh, the image, the bat down. The only parallel to that was the sapphire, right? And look at the sapphire prices still. It's holding so well. Um, so I think the bat down is such an iconic card and it has a super, super low pop. I think it was like 200. So it's, it's just equivalent to the gold Acuna and don't get me wrong. Both, you can't go wrong with both cards, but I'm going to stick with the Acuna bat down. Um, I know it's not going to probably be the choice right now. If you were to put a pull up, it'd probably be the update because I, I would lean towards that. I, I, that logic is the same, like the way I see it where you guys are reading it but i just think that long term the 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 bat down card is the card like it's the image Mm -hmm. you know and that might be too much hobby but yeah that's that's me i could see that yeah no i can't argue that for sure yeah good one johnny all right fellas 1v1 if you could get rid of one of these for good out of the hobby (laughs) non non auto relic hits and sticker autos <laughs> or overprinted parallels like what shock pulsar fast break all of this nonsense that we're seeing if you could get rid of one for good in the hobby overprinted parallels or auto relic hit sorry non auto relic hits like paper napkins and sticker autos <laughs> paper napkins <laughs> So wait, the non-auto relics and sticker and they're, they're... grouped into one, yeah. So would you rather get rid of the non-auto relic hits and sticker autos, or get rid of overprinted parallels? It's easy for me because you include sticker autos. I don't mind sticker autos. I don't prefer them, but I don't mind them. Right. So let's say uh, let's say take that out. So it's, for me, it's like if it was non-auto relics versus overprinted parallels, even with the upside down sticker autos. <laughs> hey, that, that, that makes it rare <laughs> that makes it pop one um, <laughs> I would um, yeah the relics uh, you know what no 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 the parallels so you're getting rid of the parallels <laughs> yeah the overprinted parallels mm. They right now they have both very very limited value no value actually at all um but you know i could see the relic rebounding you know we talked about this too like with with fanatics if they could do something like that you know something with the relic cards i could see that rebounding so whereas overprinted parallels it's just it's just for kids at that point yeah you you just give it away yeah so yeah i'm gonna go with parallels i'm gonna agree with clark like for me, I, I still enjoy – it's not that I enjoy sticker autos. It's I've accepted sticker autos, and, you know, it's needed at the end of the day. Uh, I think there's way too many parallels. I think it, it, it kills – like, there's there needs to be a balance between upper – like, upper deck, they make no parallels. And then it's like <laughs> right. Topps Chrome, it's like Parallel City. It's like, guys, find the, like, the <laughs> in-between, right. you know, of, of, of that, right? So, um, yeah, I'm going to go um, – uh, and I, I agree with Clark too in terms of fanatics being being in the apparel game and the licensing. I think they could do so much more with uh, with relics now. Like they tops they don't like they just like force it and put it together. It's the worst. Like whenever I pull like a tops relic, it's like the worst feeling. I rather not have a relic. Right. That's how much I hate those relics that they put <laughs> in. Yeah. But 
Yeah, sticker autos I I actually like. I I don't mind. I think they're needed. Uh so I'm going to keep the sticker autos for sure. Wow. Okay. Damn, I didn't want to do this, but it will be a sweep. <laughs> I I do I hate non-auto relic hits. I think it's such a waste of a hit. It's just a waste of hobby space. I'm not a big fan of sticker autos as well. Um I would love for both to be gone. With that being said though, I'm such a classic collector. Like I love that going back to like, you know, Refractor Jones um as a guest, like going back to like 93, 94, 95 Tops Finest when I was collecting those bigger cards. Like mm-hmm. collecting and like hunting for the refractor back then. It was such a big thing. And I and I I still to this day, you guys you guys see my collection, right? You my collection versus Clark's collection. There's a clear difference. Like I always collect <laughs> flagship non-auto parallels. Like that's my thing. I love the the major league flagship, like the pro flagship, and then the parallels, especially like the OG parallels. I'm such a big fan of that. So I'm so I like what's selected to the brand in producing like 300 parallels or whatever they did. It was just such nonsense. <laughs> I was so not a fan. And if they could, if these, you know, Panini and Top Scrum can bring it back to, you know, even if you had to make, if you had to, you know, actually, no, no, sorry. Not overprint, keep it low print. <laughs> I don't want to see overprint base. <laughs> but if they just got rid of that stuff, man, and brought it back to like the OG parallels only, um, I would be such a fan of that as a collector. So for me, mm-hmm. yeah, I... I hate both sides, but I just hate the overprinted parallels <laughs> way more than I hate the non-auto relics and sticker autos. So, yeah, it's going to be a sweep. Okay, so we'll finish off with my 1v1. So we say, you know, during these times, you got to collect what you love. So this is kind of my PC question. Ooh. So I want you guys to help me out. And I'm trying to kind of get a couple of cards that uh, have somewhat equal value. So I had to do a little bit of math here. But uh, yeah, on one side, the Cal Ripken 1982 Tops Traded mm. rookie card. I've always wanted one of those. Mm. Uh, still, you know, we talk about cards that are holding better value. The vintage ones are doing okay, mm. you know, and that's at about $5,000 right now, PSA 10. And uh, on the other side, the Derek Jeter Tops Gold PSA 10. Oh, so nice too. 2500 each so two of those huh. so two Derek Jeter tops gold PSA 10 versus one Cal Ripken tops traded 1982 tops traded yeah I'm gonna go Cal Ripken man like for me I'm OG like that's a that Cal Ripken card is such a like nostalgia card for me mm. because for me I grew up in the 80s I I was out of the card game by the time I was like 93 you know so mm-hmm. it's like 93 i think was the last year i i i kind of like was in the card game but the cat cal-, cal was a legend like he has the story of like you know the whole kevin yeah. costner deal that we that we <laughs> talked about you know <laughs> like he's such a legend like and he he basically kind of reinvented baseball in terms of the stereotype of shortstops you know, like yeah. because the the whole stereotype of sh- shortstops were like, oh, you, you're defense first guy, you know, just hit for average and, you know, you don't have any power. Like the Ozzie Smiths, you know, the Dick Schofields. I, can, I shouldn't compare Dick Schofield with Ozzie Smith, but like the point <laughs> is like no power, like low batting average. Right. But then here comes Cal Ripken, you know, dropping 20 to 30 home runs every year, you know, playing every single game. He's six foot five, just a monster shortstop. Yeah. And I, I guarantee you that that top traded card is pretty low pop. It has to be. I just looked it up. You might be surprised. It's 400. Right. So yeah, yeah that's low pretty pop. low, I think. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the Derek Jeter top score PSA 10 is 409. Oh, so it's pretty, so it's pretty even, eh? Yeah. I'm still going with Cal. Okay. <laughs> the legend of Cal. Yeah, for me. Yeah. I, I mm-hmm. Yeah, the, the top score Jeter doesn't really do it. If it was SP, different. Right. The foil, yeah. I was looking at that, but those prices are way yeah, yeah. You'd have higher. to get like a like a BGS nine, like a high sub BGS nine or a PSA, maybe or, nine or yeah. four Cal Ripkins. <laughs> 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 I could have gone the other way, I guess. Right. 
Uh, um, okay, Cal. <laughs> I, I love I love both players. Uh, I love both cards, but for me, it's really easy. It's Cal Ripken, Cal Ripken all the way. Hmm. Um, it's just like eighty two tops traded, like the the graphics, the image. It just screams like the epitome of like eighties, you know, modern or modern vintage or vintage sports cars like it's just beautiful man like the coloring everything the design Mm -hmm. 82 i love it i was never like a huge you know clark you're like a big huge clark uh cal ripkin fan i wasn't Uh, i liked cal ripkin but i wasn't like he wasn't like my favorite player but the card i would love that card because i think the card just such represents that time frame and it's just beautiful so as a collector it has everything i appeal it's cal ripkin it's rare all of the above. Like as much as I like the Cal Ripken, I also like the '83 tops Tony Gwynn, the one where it's kind of like he's like right. looks it's like he's running similar. away. Yeah. Same thing. Yeah, I yeah. think the coloring, the the, the design, beautiful. Ricky and I, Henderson, I'm, right? And and I'm not like a yeah, Rick Henderson too. All three of these guys, I'm not a. I wasn't like they, these three were my favorite players, but those three cards just represent that era so perfectly, and the color scheming, everything about those cards, top notch. So. Yeah, it's an easy one for me. Cal Ripken all the way. Okay. Damn, it's going to be sweet. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Will. That's another, another sweet. Yeah, I mean, for me, it's a very biased decision. Cal was like my favorite shortstop um, as well. Next to Tony Fernandez, uh, you know, that's my hometown <laughs> Tony boy, right? Fernandez. Oh, Tony is like 1A, 1B right there, okay? so <laughs> Tony. <laughs> Tony. <laughs> Um, and, uh, yeah, well, you know, when I first got back into hobby, I looked at Cal Ripken cards almost right away that and the Ken Griffey upper deck, of course, right. right? Just to, for nostalgic reasons. And even then, like, you know, Cal Ripken top trade in 1982, when I first got back, it was expensive. Like it was out of my budget, but I wish, you know, now that I have a few more bucks, I wish I could travel back in time and buy it back (laughs) then. But yeah, now it's like 5,000 still expensive, but I would love to have that in my collection. Mm. I like the Derek Jeter tops gold. I, you I know, like I it think too. Yeah. obviously I like the SP foil better, but um, I like the the gold um, plate look. You know, and I think it's pretty um, distinctive when you look at Derek Jeter right. rookie cards and uh, low pop. You know, we just saw that so just over four hundred, and um, I actually have I bought one raw, took the risk to get it graded at PSA. Came back a PSA eight, which is not worth that much. <laughs> <laughs> it was a hundred bucks, you know, PSA eight. Yeah. But uh, those cards are hard to get. Obviously, hard to get. Yeah, the PSA yeah, ten now, sure. right? For sure. So, um, so I thought, and he plays for the Yankees. Jeter's obviously um, a lot of people's favorite players as well. Actually, when I got married for my uh, um, groomsman gift, I gave each of them a not a tops gold. I just didn't the, have that much money. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty sweet. Tops, That's a pretty sweet tops uh, baseball gift, card yeah. for each of them. That's sick. Yeah, so yeah, so I guess it's it's got some um, you know uh, meaning for it to me as well. <laughs> but uh, yeah, ultimately as a collector, I'm going with Calvert. Yeah. Nice. All right. Uh, yeah, that wraps up a long longer show. We made up for the Friday uh, short episode then. But uh, yeah, we. As always, thank everyone that listens to our episodes. We are really encouraged by the positive feedback we get on a weekly basis. And um, yeah, if you want to see more of our podcast content, check out our Instagram page as well, at Cards to the Moon, all one word. And uh, yeah, we'll be back for another new episode next week. We'll see you then. Bye. Hey, thanks for listening to Cards to the Moon. We'd really appreciate you subscribing to our podcast wherever you listen to your podcasts. And you can also connect with each of us on Instagram at 5 Card Guys, or you can follow Hyung at Integrity Sports Cards, or John at Trade You at Recess. You can also check us out at 5CardGuys.com. Thanks again, and hope to connect soon.